He started all of this. Well, you could back up and say, well, you know, you, that car almost clipped him. So they started it. But you know what that reminds me of, ladies and gentlemen? That reminds me of road rage. It's no different from road rage. You know, somebody flips the bird off at you. You know, you have a conscious decision at that time to say never mind or to react to it. So if this is anywhere close to the beginning of road rage, probably the beginning of road, but not rage, because it, it turned into rage once he reacted. The defense tells you that there's two sides to the story. But there's one side to this story. Jonathan Masters was angry on the evening of December the 7th, 2012 with his girlfriend. He thought she was going to leave him. She definitely was not going out, going out with him on that Friday night. So he goes out to cool off. He encounters this white vehicle. upset because they tell him to get out of the roadway. He yells, F you back, and then simply approaches the vehicle to fight him. Now, what happens after that? They continue to subdue. You heard his testimony. They continue to wrestle with him, all, all the while indicating we're the police, police, police. But not Jonathan Masters. Got to be more than that to be the police. You just can't have a badge in front of you. You can't have these items on your waist. You can't have none of that and yell police and convince me that you're the police. Jonathan Masters heard what he wanted to hear that night. And that's why we're here today. You know, I, I, you know, it's unfortunate that I think you've heard the testimony. There's been testimony that he suffered a broken nose. That's unfortunate. Um, you, you know, it's unfortunate when there are encounters with the police like this and someone ends up dead. Okay, you know, uh, it's unfortunate. Okay, uh, but at the end of the day. That was the only thing that caused him to retreat, caused him to stop resisting arrest of this particular, of, of these two detectives. So I, I would tell you that Jonathan Masters, this defendant, when he was walking to the store, he was more than just a little sad. He was a big angry. Again, if you remove the labels, just for a moment, just remove the labels, just assume that these individuals in the white car, Detective Cassie and Detective Browning, were not police officers. This is still disorderly conduct and menacing. Because he, who, whoever was in that white car, the thugs, it was his intent to encounter them. Even without being threatened, even without being threatened, there were no threats to this defendant before he approached that vehicle. He told you that he couldn't, he, that there, there were no objects pointed outside of the car, there were no weapons. It's just an individual much shorter than him getting out of the car. So ladies and gentlemen, when you go back and you take a look at these instructions, um, it's a commonwealth's position that you have no choice but to find this defendant guilty. Uh, he was not privileged to act in self-protection at all. Um, did he use threatening or physical force or violence against these detectives? Yes, he did. Did he put Detective Cassie at least 
in a position, intentionally placed him in a position, reasonable apprehension of imminent physical injury? Yes, he did. Did he engage in fighting? Yes, he did. So I would ask that once you deliberate, you know, follow the instructions. You know, don't, don't let any sympathy that maybe somebody can argue or make the statement that maybe this defendant got the bad end of the stick. I mean, that's, I, you know, if it was my son, I would expect the police officer to do the same thing to, to subdue him and cause him to retreat. We live in a society of laws. And we expect these individuals, we expect these individuals to uphold that law. And we expect these individuals to treat everyone the same way. So when you deliberate and you take a look at the evidence, the exhibits, and the testimony evidence that you've heard, you're going to have no choice but to find this defendant guilty. And we would ask that you find him guilty on all counts. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Price, can you give me those exhibits? Sure. Can you give me that exhibit? Right. I need to uh, pull our alternate juror, and that is uh, Paul Clay. Mr. Clay, uh, you're excused, and we appreciate your uh, participation. It's unfortunate that you couldn't sit uh, through the deliberations, or maybe not. I don't know. I'm sure the lawyers would like to talk to you about this case, but you have absolutely no obligation to talk to them. You're free to go home as of this moment. All right? Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Well, uh, ladies, uh, the case is uh, now uh, to be submitted to you. Uh, when you reach the jury room, the first order of business is to select a four-person uh, to uh, act as your presiding officer. Well, and really, they're to guide the discussions and to uh, uh, they have the, the responsibility of filling out the verdict form. Now, uh, the copy of the instructions with my uh, signature on it is the one that the uh, four-person will need to complete. All right, and again, uh, the, the verdict must be unanimous. Every one of you must agree. Uh, you're going to be able to take the exhibits that we have here uh, with you, and um, if during the course of your deliberations you have a question, if you'll knock on the door, uh, Deputy Weathers will be there, and he will uh, work out the process of us answering your questions. But we're counting on you all to struggle through this. We want you all to make the decision here. Uh, about uh, this case. All right, Deputy Weathers, step forward if you would. Deputy Weathers, do you solemnly swear that you will keep the jury together and allow no one to speak or communicate with the jury on any subject connected with this trial and that you will not do so yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, for the jury. I thought y'all did an excellent job. I don't know uh, how this thing's going to turn out, but I do believe we got us a nice, clean trial, so uh, we'll uh, see where we're at. Now, uh, I, if you want, uh, if you give me your cell phone numbers, I will call you. I'll let you know what it is. You still have my card from the other day? Uh, yes, I do. But you cannot, you know, the point is uh, don't get, you know, five minutes out of pocket. I mean, there are some restaurants around town, or I don't know if these places are even open at this hour. But there's a couple this way, you know, 4th Street Live is that way, 
but uh, I just need to be able to find you. I got Mr. Price's number. Your so, Honor, do they is is there any argument on sentencing, or is the jury just sentencing them back there? Um, right? The jury sentences. Okay. But there's uh, is there an argument about it? The jury the jury recommends a sentence. Okay. So they recommend a sentence. So there's a discussion about it. There's no argument okay. about it. There's a okay. discussion. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So. Thank you. All right. All right. So I got uh, Mr. Short. I got your number. And uh, I'll call you uh, when uh, we get a verdict. Thank All you, right? Your Honor. Do you know who's on? Uh, do you know who's who's the judge is on duty tonight? I do not know. Because I'm going to be downstairs. For you got time. night duty, Carl? I do have night duty. Yes. You need to find somebody to handle it for you, Carl. Huh? You need, you need to take the night off, dude. You got things no, to do. I'm fine, Jesse. Yeah, get JJ. He's doing nothing. All right. I got your numbers. I'll, I'll track you down if I need you. All right. Thanks, Thanks you. Judge. Thank Go you, away. Judge. Been there forever. to a Westchester for a client meeting at 7.30, man. So. I put in my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Judge, it was nice to meet you if I don't see you on verdict. All right. Take care. Good work, guys. Anybody's ball game, man. <laughs> I'll tell my sister thanks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mr. Stokemeyer, are you rolling out of here? Are you going to let Shore take the verdict? Is that it? I think I am, Your Honor. I'll tell you what, Shore, <laughs> that's a dirty deal right there. <laughs> well, he did me a favor by coming down here to help me on this anyway. So. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Judge. All right. See you.